blessings people of God uh, this is Christ the entire foundation coming your way once again with uh, touching the heart of reality TV uh, this is where we teach the Word of God and bring balance to the Word of God uh, today we are here to share with you a simple message that uh, captures a truth that bring balance to the body of Christ that is to say that the things that uh, we need to know the things that we need to understand as children of God in the house of God uh, therefore we bring to you the word uh, from our Lord that we have titled is there anything too hard for God is there anything too hard for God and uh, before we go into the word as we look into the doctrine of our Lord let us share a simple prayer uh, Heavenly Father we thank you we bless you we acknowledge your name we acknowledge your supremacy we also acknowledge you as God of all even the Lord of all over everything let you alone be extolled and exalted among all gods and any other thing we ask that your word be made plain by your spirit and be made bare by your spirit. Uh, grant us the insight, grant us the eyes that see it, the truth in your word, nothing but the truth. Therefore, we trust the Holy Spirit, you will open the eyes of our understanding that we may behold that which the Lord has put in his word. Uh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Let your name alone be praised. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, people of God, we bring to you the word of God from our Lord Jesus. As we have titled, Is There Anything Too Hard for God? Um, this is to bring to you the notice of many rumors that are circulating that what God cannot do does not exist these rumors are perhaps it may be coming from a song or from a book or anywhere that these rumors are coming from we want to tell you that this is a false doctrine that has been projected or inserted into the body of christ so we want to tell you that this is not the truth from our lord that what god cannot do does not exist it is very sad that many christians uh, actually make these comments post it all around um by that ignorance of limiting and degrading the very god that we claim to believe and serve how come the christian can make such comment when they themselves would come back and say that there is nothing difficult for god it means we are not balanced it means we don't even know what we are doing if 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 people are not balanced they will always be tossed to and fro. when the scripture revealed in the book of ephesians chapter 4 we will read that portion of scripture so that we would understand what we are talking about this time around you see christianity has come this far to look as if our god changes according to our challenges or situations or problems but this is so wrong our god still remains the same no matter the situation no matter the challenges of his children even though god would like to express or extend his arm onto his children that doesn't mean that god is different from yesterday the bible reveals in hebrews that it is that same god that abraham called it which is the god of yesterday even the god of today that we are still calling upon will still be that same god that our generations to come will still call on to him which is the god of tomorrow are you with me 
so it is so wrong that we would just say anything that we feel it is good it is okay in the sight of our lord so we are saying that our god still remains the same no matter the situation or the challenges that we go through whether we are happy or sad our god is still god now i want to point this thing out very clearly that it is never recorded in the bible which is the word of our god that in quote what god cannot do does not exist it is never it has never been recorded if you will search through the bible or the word of god that we carry as a bible or as a manual to the basics of our faith which is in the lord jesus there is nothing as written as what god cannot do does not exist the christian is supposed to live life according to the word of god which is the doctrine of christ and not what we think or feel or feel free to say whether we the, the things that we feel free to do whether that thing is right or good or whatever that thing may be because it may be right and good but error in the sight of god so it is not because um that thing looks good we can say it we can make comment of it or we can actually it may sound pleasing in our ears but when that one who is from the beginning appear it may look as a rebellious comment or a rebellious words before him those things could be blasphemous before him even though it may be good in our sight there is nothing difficult for god and god can actually do everything so it is wrong for even the believer to think that there is something that does not exist because god cannot do it it does not exist because god cannot do it how can the believer think like that when we claim to to say that the god that we serve there is nothing that he cannot do praise the lord so we'll go to genesis chapter 18 verse 11 to 14 this is concerning abraham and sarah as i really say now abraham and sarah were old and well stricken in age and and it ceased to be with sarah after the manner of woman of women that is to say that sarah is past the age where woman can actually be fruitful and bear fruit as children so that that age of sarah there was no possibility there was not even a strain of possibility that could bring that reality now verse 12 says therefore sarah laughed within herself saying after i am wax old shall i have pleasure my lord being also old also and the lord said unto abraham wherefore did sarah laugh saying shall i of a surety bear a child bear a son bear a son or a child which i'm old verse 14 says is is anything too hard for the lord that's the question god is asking is anything too hard for the lord at that time appointed i will return unto thee according to the time of life and sarah shall have a son now this is something that even both abraham and sarah saw it to be impossible that cannot actually happen how can someone who is barren be fruitful and not to even talk about it someone who is barren and is also in her old age how could this be possible that is impossibilities are you with me stay with me 
because i would want us to go into the word of our lord because what god actually wants us to see in that verse is that there is nothing too hard for him as he said in luke chapter 1 verse 37 he says for with god nothing shall be impossible that is to say that for with god nothing shall be impossible there shall be nothing impossible with god that we serve nothing will be impossible with god that is to say that god has the possibility of doing everything anything that we can imagine or think of even that which is beyond our comprehension god can still do that stay with me stay with me now jeremiah 32 verse 26 to 27 says then came the word of the lord unto jeremiah saying behold i am the lord the god of all flesh is there anything too hard for me god is now asking you and i this question that is there anything too hard for me now god is asking if there is anything too hard for him I also want to put this question forward. Is there anything that which God cannot do? So if we as the children of God will just wake up because we had one or two revelations and just want to say anything, we would be bringing that which is the doctrine of men into the body of Christ which is not of the Lord because anything that we must say must be inconsistent and in alignment to the word of God what I want to say is that there are many things hidden in God and yet not in existence in the realm of men which does not mean that god cannot do there is so much infinite or infinite and limitless reality in god that are not yet manifested in the domain of men yet does not limit god in any way because we don't know such things yet in fact the the, there is everything that God can do. These things may not yet be manifested and that does not mean that God cannot do them. Because the Bible even talks about the world to come, the next world to come that we have not seen but the bible which is the word of god has proclaimed that there is a world even to come whether god is yet preparing or about to prepare or has not yet prepared or has actually prepared and that is just waiting for the time for its its fully manifestation no one knows but we know that there is a world to come which we have not yet seen because the bible also said that there are things that are prepared for them that love god and these things have not entered into the hearts of men have not yet entered into the hearts of men now i want to read with you um, the scripture that is first corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 it says that how be it we speak wisdom among men among men or them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught but we speak the wisdom of God in the mysteries even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew for had they knew it they would not have crucified the Lord of glory but as it is written 
I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God had prepared for them that loved him. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, that is to say that nothing that we would say must disalign to the word of God. Because there are so many things that God has still hid. He says the secret things, as it, 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 it says in Deuteronomy um, 29, 29. It says that the secret things belonged unto the Lord our God. That means there are things that are secret. They belong to God alone. It is hidden in God and for God alone. It says, but those things which are revealed belonged to us and our children forever that we may do all the words of this law so there are things that are secrets that are hidden from man no matter what man do man can never fraternize with these things and these things are hidden man will never know man will never see it is only in god and him alone in himself that knows these things and as long as these things have not been yet revealed to man man cannot know so would we then say that these things that have not yet been manifested or revealed unto us they are things that god cannot do no we cannot we cannot say these things not because we claim that god cannot do them so we cannot just say things that we want to say or things that we feel comfortable in saying so when we hear people say that what god cannot do can does not exist is a doctrine of man or of men this thing should not be allowed among men because when we continue in these things the next generation will come up and say this means there is something that does not exist because God cannot do it. And before you realize, the next generation that comes after just picks it up and say that ah, this thing does not exist because God cannot do it. The fact that you have not seen it, known it, or had actually experienced it yet does not mean it does not exist. Because there are so many possibilities in God, there are so many reality, realities in God that have not yet been manifested. And yet we do not have that 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 audacity to say that it does not exist so it is so wrong and it is it is the doctrine of men to say that what god cannot do does not exist this is a false doctrine and must not be allowed in the body of christ because per time this thing will grow to become one of the rebellious things that the believers will always say which could be blasphemous actually before god and this is because the fivefold ministry are lacking people of god we need to know and understand that which god has committed to us the reason why god gave the fivefold um ministry or the gift of the son that jesus himself gave to men is that for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god not of the knowledge of the things we feel we know or think is right or wrong. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And this is the part that I need you to take notice of. It says in verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even christ christ never came to tell us that jesus christ never stepped down from glory to tell man that there is something that god cannot do 
that is why that thing does not exist never in the bible has it ever been recorded that what god cannot do does not exist so it is wrong for the believer to just um, be saying things because we are excited or we are happy or because we 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 had a revelation no we must bring balance to the things we say there must be the these things that we talk or say must be consistent to the word of god so we don't just say things because we are excited or we are just happy no we as a christians live according to the manual which is the word of god and anything that we must say or do must be the things that are most prescribed in the word of god by god himself because there are things that are described in the bible but may not be things that are prescribed for us so there are things that are prescribed that the believer must live according to so people of god there is absolute everything that god can do if you think there is something that does not exist because god cannot do go and ask god but the bible never said that there is something that does not exist because god cannot do so it is an error to make such statement or such comment what are we handing over to our generations to come is these the things that we want to teach our world or our generation these are the doctrines of men and we must bring back the doctrine of our lord jesus that 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 faith that was committed to the apostles must be revived even in our age therefore people of god let us be careful of the things we say or do anything that we say or do must be in alignment with the word if those things are not found in the word that are prescribed let us not get close to them because it could be because of these things that the lord may be unhappy with us or because of these things that we may actually be cut off it may sound good and sweet in our ears but when he that is first and last when he that dwells in the midst of the coals of fire appears it may be wrong before him because the prophet isaiah saw himself to be good and clean before even the men even before god but when he was caught up into the reality he realized that ah woe unto me for i am a man of un unclean lips someone who have been prophesying for so many years now realize that woe unto him that why because he was a man of an unclean lips so people of god it is not because the things sound good or it looks good or appear good before god that is why we do that looking at the tower of babel people built it into the air into the atmosphere into the heaven so that they can meet god so that they can see god is it wrong no but the fact that it is not the will of god is wrong before god it's an it's an error so anything that is built by men that is not according to the commandment of god is a doctrine of man and god will actually judge that thing so let us be careful of the things we say and do in the presence of god even when we live life believing god by his faith we must learn to live according to the faith of our lord jesus so people of god god bless you for your time and i pray that this message will find good um, with you and you would um, adhere to this simple truth and doctrine that we have just shared with you god bless you stay with us continue to follow us as we bring to you the truth concerning our lord and even his word be blessed in jesus mighty name amen